Have you ever felt like you've just had enough of society around you? Have you ever been in a situation where you ask yourself, is this really where I want to be? Every hour of every day we're being bombarded with all sorts of information, and most of the time it's information that we don't even want to know. With the rapid rise of technology and the capitalist society we live in, we can often find ourselves overwhelmed with what's happening around us because everything is changing so quickly. And all we do is just try and find a way to adapt to the situation that we find ourselves in. In a society where the true value of oneself is what one has achieved, we could even say that we've transformed from a human being to a human doing. We're constantly striving for something more and are constantly driven by a strong desire to climb up the ladder of success. That's why you might feel too much weight on your shoulders and think that the real solution is to isolate yourself from the world around you and take a break. Also, as a society, our rate of social interactions has increased significantly. Everyone that you could ever wish to contact is just a click away and we're given this ability to establish communication in just a few seconds. The internet can connect us with people from all around the world, but at the same time, it disconnects us from ourselves. This is because we're constantly speaking our thoughts and are being exposed to other people's opinions. What we don't realize is that while we're hearing what other people think, we rarely stop to listen to our very own thoughts. There's a creative genius inside all of us, and in today's world, it's really hard to realize your true potential. And that is why solitude might be the solution to unlocking your true potential and offering what you have out into the world. Solitude has been a practice that almost every intellectual goes through, and it's almost as if it's a necessary step to take in order to achieve greatness. We can see that all throughout history, the greatest minds had to go through the same process of isolating and finding themselves in order to understand who they really are and find what they're looking for. First and foremost, it's important to mention that practicing solitude doesn't mean feeling and being lonely. Sometimes, even though we're surrounded by other people, we still don't feel like we have someone that can truly understand us and that can make us feel empty and lonely. In fact, most of the time, the reason why we like being alone is because we have the need to isolate ourselves from the people around us, because it drains our physical and mental energy, today often referred to as our social battery. That is why we need to find ourselves and incorporate solitude as a practice in our lives. So, what are the real benefits of practicing solitude? What kind of results can we find throughout history? And what can we do to incorporate solitude in our lives? Well, in this video, we'll take a deep dive into exploring these questions and, of course, try to answer them. So, let's start with the benefits of solitude. Number 1. Self-discovery and personal growth Solitude provides you an opportunity for introspection, helping you better understand your thoughts, feelings and motivations. It's only when we truly understand ourselves that we can truly know our real potential and what we can achieve in life. And solitude can really help us with that. That's why legendary Greek philosopher Socrates often spoke about the importance of reflection and how much it's important for us to explore our thoughts and try to find the truth deep inside of us. That is why he famously said, Know thyself, a maxim that's being quoted to this very day. Socrates noticed that in order for us to think for ourselves, we need to take a step back and to turn off what everyone else is saying and look inwards if we want to find the answers that we're looking for. When we're by ourselves, without other people around to influence us, we can think deeply about our thoughts, feelings and what matters most to us. This helps us understand ourselves better 
our strengths, weaknesses, and what we truly want. Number 2. Emotional Balance Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, wrote about the value of solitude in his work, Meditations. He often emphasized the importance of withdrawing into oneself for inner peace and clarity. One notable passage reflects this idea. People look for retreats for themselves, in the country, by the coast, or in the hills. There's nowhere that a person can find a more peaceful and trouble-free retreat than in his own mind. So constantly give yourself this retreat and renew yourself. In this passage from Meditations, Aurelius says that true solitude and peace comes from within your mind, not from external places. He notes that people often seek peace by going into nature, like the countryside or the beach. However, he believes that the best and most peaceful retreat is not a physical place, but a state of mind. By retreating inwardly, Marcus means that you should regularly take time to look inside yourself, creating a mental sanctuary where you can think and find comfort. This involves focusing on your own thoughts, values and principles rather than getting distracted by what's happening around you. The practice of looking inward is key to staying emotionally balanced. When we focus on our inner selves, we can understand our beliefs, emotions and reactions better. We can see what truly matters to us, make sure our actions match our values and get to know ourselves more deeply. By doing so, we become less dependent on outside things for our happiness. Life will always have challenges and stresses, but having a calm and centered mind helps us handle these difficulties better. Number 3. Increased Level of Creativity and Innovation Many creative individuals find that solitude enhances their ability to generate new ideas and solutions without external interruptions. One great example of this is the famous German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche is famously known for his critique of society. He was highly critical of the conformity and herd mentality, a notion when people follow what a larger group's doing or thinking without really thinking for themselves. He found it to be prevalent in society and believed that individuals needed to withdraw from those societal influences to develop their own values and beliefs. He often retreated to the Swiss Alps and other remote locations to provide him the tranquility and isolation he needed to think deeply and write extensively. For example, he wrote many of his key works, such as Thus Spoke Zarathustra and Beyond Good and Evil during periods of isolation. Furthermore, Nietzsche believed that solitude was essential for the development of profound philosophical insights. He saw it as a way to detach from societal norms and pressures, allowing for original and independent thought. It's only through the process of isolating ourselves that we can truly achieve greatness and show our creativity to the world. Number 4. Spiritual Growth Living in today's world demands our full attention and we can oftentimes forget the bigger picture in life. It can disconnect us from our real true being, purpose and meaning. That's why many spiritual traditions emphasize the importance of solitude for meditation, prayer and contemplation, which can lead to deeper spiritual growth and understanding. As a testament to that, we have the Eastern philosophical traditions. The practice of solitude in Buddhism can be seen in various aspects of its teachings, meditation practices and the monastic lifestyle. Buddhism teaches us that it's through meditation that individuals can achieve deeper states of concentration, consciousness, mindfulness and insight. They were able to successfully map out the benefits of practicing solitude and show how much it's important to incorporate it into our daily lives. One of the most important insights and benefits 
is the state of inner peace and clarity. They also taught that it's through solitude that we actually engage in an intensive spiritual practice, which can lead to higher states of consciousness and ultimately enlightenment. All these famous thinkers serve as a testament to the profound results and benefits that come through practicing solitude. But the real question still remains, how can I practice solitude in my life? What are some of the steps that I need to take and what are the things that I need to do to incorporate solitude into my daily living? Let's try to answer these questions. The first thing that you might need to do is create a separate dedicated space for solitude. Designate a specific area in your home where you can retreat to to be alone. It could be a separate room that you're no longer using or perhaps a quiet corner or even a specific spot in your garden. The space should serve as a personal sanctuary that you can always turn to whenever you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious. It's important to ensure that the space is free from distractions, clutter and noise. Yes, even your phone and other electronic devices. If you've found that spot in the comfort of your own home, you've achieved the first milestone in practicing solitude. The next step that you might need to do is create a regular schedule for solitude. This can be tailor-made according to how much time you have and the lifestyle that you lead, so it really depends on how flexible you can be. One effective schedule is to incorporate daily activities and practices as well as weekly retreats. For daily practice, you should set aside time each day for solitude, either in the morning or in the evening. This can be as short as 10 to 15 minutes at first, but can gradually increase to longer sessions if needed. For the weekly retreats, you should allocate a day each week where you disconnect from all digital devices and just be by yourself. Instead of being digitally hooked on that day, you might want to spend some alone time in nature. You could take a hike through the woods, go for a stroll in a local park, or if you're feeling less energetic, just sit by a riverside and watch the world go by. Spending time in nature is an important aspect of practicing solitude. Until very recently in human history, nature was literally everything that surrounds us, which is why it's still so important when trying to navigate today's world. Being in nature has been shown to reduce the levels of cortisol, the stress hormone. The calming sounds, sights and smells of nature help lower anxiety and promote relaxation. Nature offers a break from the constant noise and stimulation of urban environments, providing a peaceful setting that calms the mind. Just a simple activity out in nature, like a walk or perhaps something more adventurous like going on a hike, can really promote our physical health, which in turn supports mental well-being. Another great thing about spending time in nature is that it can help us cultivate gratitude and provide a broader perspective on life. Observing the cycles of nature can remind individuals of the simplicity and beauty of existence. That is because nature is very good at highlighting the joy found in simple things, such as the sound of birdsong or the feel of the breeze, fostering a deeper appreciation for life's simple pleasures. But it's not enough to simply take some time off of the day and sit in silence or even spend some time in nature. That's why the next step you might need to do is engage in solitary activities. One activity that you can do is mindful meditation. We already talked about Buddhism and how they used meditation to practice solitude and that's why this activity doesn't come as a surprise. Practicing meditation cultivates a sense of inner calm and focus and can also make us feel like we're truly living in the present moment. Giving yourself some time for meditating in today's world can really make us feel more than what everyday life has to offer. A mindful meditation is all about observing without any judgment. It involves being fully present and aware of your thoughts, feelings, emotions, as well as bodily sensations and the environment around you. Another solitary activity that you can do is journaling. 
Sometimes keeping a journal can be very important because you can easily reflect on your thoughts, feelings and experiences. Writing can be a powerful tool for self-discovery and emotional processing, and journaling can help us with that. Psychological findings and analysis show that people who keep a journal have a much deeper understanding of themselves and the experiences and interactions they encounter. That's because we often have the tendency to process a certain situation on an emotional level without having to think about it rationally. As a result, we can find ourselves feeling confused and sometimes even miserable. But it's only when we finally put those emotions on a piece of paper that we can truly understand what we're feeling and even find out what we're actually thinking. A wise man once said that when we write things down, we give them power. And that's especially true when it comes to understanding yourself. That's why journaling can be really beneficial when practicing solitude and why every single one of us should keep a journal. Last, but by no means least, you'd need to limit your social obligations. When practicing solitude, the general practice is that you would need to lower the social interactions that you have on a daily basis and stop giving your time to others, but give it to yourself instead. While practicing solitude, it's important to remember that you need to prioritize your well-being and not fulfilling somebody else's wishes and desires. That's why it's sometimes important to start saying no. You might find this difficult at first, but it's definitely a skill worth learning. You need to learn to say no to social invitations that don't align with your need for solitude. Instead, you need to engage in intentional socializing. Even though socializing should be lowered, it doesn't mean that you should exclude it completely. Socializing is a healthy practice and it's definitely an essential part of our lives. However, that doesn't mean we should engage in any type of activities that we're asked to. Instead, what we need to do is make every interaction and socialization meaningful and intentional and ensure that it doesn't overwhelm your need for solitude. Practicing solitude in the modern world requires intentionality and dedication. By creating spaces and routines for solitude, engaging in solitary activities, minimizing digital distractions, and prioritizing self-reflection, you can cultivate a fulfilling and enriching solitary practice. Solitude can lead to greater self-awareness, inner peace, and personal growth, making it an invaluable part of a balanced life. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to check out our full Philosophies for Life playlist. And for more videos to help you find success and happiness using beautiful philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.